Welcome back to this series on the Tao Te Ching, where we're going over each individual chapter of Taoism's most important text. So if you're new here, I recommend going to my channel where I have all the videos in a playlist, up to date, and in order for you to watch. So without further delay, reading from the Jafu Feng and Jane English translation of the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, here is chapter 21. The greatest virtue is to follow Tao and Tao alone. The Tao is elusive and intangible. Oh, it is intangible and elusive, and yet within is image. Oh, it is elusive and intangible, and yet within is form. Oh, it is dim and dark, and yet within is essence. This essence is very real, and therein lies faith. From the very beginning until now, its name has never been forgotten. Thus, I perceive creation. How do I know the ways of creation? Because of this. So in the first line here, the greatest virtue is to follow Tao and Tao alone. So you have many of the same sentiments that are being explained throughout the book. The main thing, of course, is following the Tao, being one with the Tao, and allowing the Tao for uh, allowing the Tao to use you as an instrument of its essence. So there's nothing higher, there will be nothing greater than that, then following the Tao and allowing the Tao to use you, not following the world and its temporary thrills and all of the bribes that the world gives you of money, status, whatever it may be. The highest is following Tao. And I like how this is said here, Tao alone, not Tao and all these other things that I kind of, you know, kind of keep neck and neck with the Tao or God, if you will, because we all have probably met people and, and it might be you watching this, you know, I mean, I've been guilty of it in the past of it being like, well, I follow God, you know, I'm, I'm whatever, I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Hindu, whatever it is, you have this very, very strong identity with your faith and you'll say, well, I follow God, but there's these other things. You know, there is God, there is the Tao, there is my spiritual practice, but then there's also these other things that are also very, very, very important. And of course, like I always say, I've said this a million times on this channel, I'm gonna keep saying it. No one is expecting everyone on earth to become a hermit in the woods who, who, who does nothing all the time. But what I'm talking about is the rabbit hole of rationalizing all of these bad habits. I think one of the best examples that I can think of personally you know, I think of all the people, I live in a pretty religious area of the United States, and you know, most people are, are Christians here. But it's just really strange that I see so much consumerism, I see so much materialism, I see so much, you know, um, embracing of pagan things. And I've talked to a lot of people, and, and they do this kind of, this weird dance between, well, yeah, I have... I have got to have my spirituality, but you know, there's also all these other things. And of course we can see the contrast between, you know, people like that. And then you look at um, priests, monks, mystics who have fully renounced everything. Not even that, you just think of people who really walk the walk and talk the talk in terms of seriously living the faith to a T. And that is the highest virtue. That is what is being told here. And that's something that I, I think people have completely forgotten, at least where I live. You know, it's different in different parts of the world. You could probably look at a place like many, many, many places in, in India, for example, where people have every day, they don't, they never forget the Tao, so to speak. They never forget God. Or in rural parts of Eastern Europe where there are all these extremely Orthodox Christian communities or, or all these very, very old school um, Muslim communities where their minds are always focused on God. And that's why I really like this first line. I'm spending a lot of time on it. That the greatest virtue, not a great virtue, the greatest virtue is to follow Tao and Tao alone. And that's something that I think many people who claim all this spirituality and this, you know, it reminds me of a term. I grew up Catholic and I remember I, I, I remember this term that um, when they would refer to Catholics who they wouldn't completely go by everything that is within the Catholic doctrine, within the Bible, what the church says, they would pick and choose all these little things. And the term was cafeteria Catholic. They're a cafeteria Catholic because they're treating the faith 
like this kind of cafeteria where they're picking everything that they kind of like. And I feel like that's how most people are. And, I, and to be completely honest, I've met people of all faiths who do this. So understand that this isn't even about a religion, a faith or anything. This is simply about how so many of us, you know, have lost you know, this greatest virtue of focusing on God and God alone, because there's all these other distractions. The Tao is elusive and intangible. Oh, it is intangible and elusive, and yet within is image. Oh, it is elusive and intangible, and yet within is form. Oh, it is dim and dark, and yet within is essence. So we know that the Tao is completely indescribable. It's incomprehensible. We cannot perceive it with our human brains. Yet, there is a flip side to this, and I like how this is kind of said here that, yeah, it's intangible, elusive, elusive, intangible, dim and dark, yet within his image, form, and essence. So it's not just something somewhere, you know, it's we can see the actual creation, we can see the actual result. Literally looking in the mirror, looking into your eyes, looking at your body, you can go out and touch a tree. You know, it has form, it has essence. There is a very electric feeling when you're walking through the woods and you see rays of sunshine, you know, or um, you feel the wind, you can hear the wind, things like this. So even though that it's completely intangible, elusive, and you can even say dim and dark, you know, and a lot of people, I think of people who say like, God has abandoned us, th th things like that. It's not true at all, God is everywhere, especially through his creation. And in this case, the Tao, like I've explained in previous videos, it's like one big tree. Everything is kind of interconnected in that way. You can literally see evidence of this in the stars, everything, the grass, like I said, nature, and including our own essence. And I've always kind of seen this, you know, when I f first kind of started to think like this and not just think, well, you know, God is somewhere else or something like that. I really perceive this as this is like the this is like the mercy of God that a lot of people talk about. That even though we cannot understand God pretty much at all, I mean, ninety nine point nine 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 of what God is is completely incomprehensible. You know, we're so our lives are so small and finite, and our brains, you know, we're we're not that great. You know, even though we think we are, that it's it's such a merciful thing that it's like, but. Here we are at the tip of the branch. We can't see the whole tree. We can't see the roots under the ground, but we know that we're part of it. We know that we're part of it. So I always found that as a very comforting thing. This essence is very real and therein lies faith. From the very beginning until now, its name has never been forgotten. Thus I perceive creation. How do I know the ways of creation? Because of this. Now this is where it all kind of comes full circle. So you have the intangible, and it's like within the intangible, we can still perceive the creation. We can still see the tips of the branch of the tree of life. But on top of all that, within the dim and dark, we develop faith. And it's really incredible when you think, you know, how long ago this was written, about 2,600 years ago. And, you know, it's fascinating that this that, that the virtue of faith is being explained in actually a pretty blunt way. It's like you can't perceive it. It's intangible, dim, dark, but there's form, there's creation. We can perceive creation in it. And from the very beginning of time, the name has, its name has never been forgotten, which is ultimately faith because that's all God really is. That's all the beyond really is because leaning on our own understanding, you know, I've talked about this in other videos. It's like when you're only relying on your own understanding of things, it's the the end of the road is going to be very close okay and how do we know this how do we know that you know this this trickle down of like well it's intangible but there's essence and within is faith and it's literally just because of this now i don't understand you know chinese at all i don't know how this was translated um frankly i haven't looked at other versions you know, if you have and you have some other stuff to say on this, I'd love, I'd love to, you know, hear it in the comments. But I always saw this as this, like, we are literal proof right now. Right now, this moment is literal proof. We still, with everything that we have with science, we still don't know what consciousness is. This itself is proof of all of the above, of the rest of the tree. The rest of the tree is there. We're the tip of the branch. But the fact that we're, there's, we're the tip of the branch means there's a tree behind it. <laughs>
So why? Because of this. And you think about, you know, how to prove God, you know, to yourself, the existence of, of a higher power. Look around, seek God in every single thing that you do, every single thing that you perceive, but also every single thing that you cannot grasp, that you cannot perceive. And I understand that this could seem very philosophical, this could seem very, very far-fetched, but it's within our DNA. We just kind of lost sight of it because of all these fancy contraptions we have these days. And like I've mentioned in, in other videos, it's like this kind of natural essence that we have has kind of been robbed by us. So it's very important for people to get in touch with it because we need to be able to see God in a tree, in a dog, whatever it may be in the best times, but also in the worst times, right? You know, it has to be everything. It can't just be the good. Because once things gets ba get bad, what, you just going to just throw it out the window? Of course not. And that's the real challenge of life, right? Being able to see God in the worst of things, you know, but also in the best of things. Best of things might be easy. That's the hardest pill to swallow, really.